Hey what's going on guys I am Master RKO and today I'm bringing you another video and this video is going to be the video that I've been waiting to make the most and it is about player movement. Now there's been uh, a couple of quick tip videos and a couple of videos that I touched on this but this is going to be finally the video that I decided to go all out and spend as much time as needed going over some of the movement for some of you players that are coming from uh, casual to competitive as the series has been named. So uh, before we start, this was the map that I was talking about in my last video that was describing um, different weather types and the way that the maps could look differently and how great they could look. This is a ma another map that was in the, um, the workshop. This is Mirage Rainy. That's really all it is. And this map looks amazing. I mean, there's just the way it looks in the rain it looks great there's the bomb for some reason but the map just looks so great and I'm, I'm really really like I just love the way it looks and I, and I think more maps if they looked like this would uh, would just help change the way people feel about some of the maps some of the maps just feel really dull and, and make you not want to play them so um, I mean but anyways, enough about that. Into player movement. Now, the first thing that I want to touch on, of course, are some of the basics. And some of these are obvious, but I'll go over them real quick anyways. Obviously, when it comes to running and sprinting, you run the fastest with a knife out. Not, you, you sprint the fastest, you crouch the fastest, you run the fastest, you know. I, I switched my button layout, which we'll go over really quickly. Um, but you, you run the fastest with a knife, you can get to places fastest. If you are not using a knife to run and the other team is, they will beat you to the place every time, and then you're going to have to worry about uh, peeking and, and getting shot. Um, the second thing you run faster with is, of course, the pistol. Um, and then SMGs, and like, I think it's SMGs and shotguns, then ARs or rifles, which are these, and then uh, LMGs and other heavies like the OP. Um, so those are just a couple basic movements um, that will, or a couple tips if you are one of those players that run around with a rifle all the time. Yes, you will have a gun out all the time. So if you're coming from here, you'll you'll you never have to worry about taking your gun out. But if someone else is running. Uh, with our knife, they can beat you to this position first, and then you have to worry about, you know, coming out and peeking. You have to worry about them getting there first and shooting you, so there's, there's just a big thing that you have to worry about that you could easily just avoid. Um, secondly, when it comes to movement, I, I describe movement in, in two uh, sections. There's movement with the mouse and movement with the keyboard. And in order to get movement properly and as close to perfect as you can in Counter-Strike, you have to be able to master both of these at the same time evenly. As you can see, I switched to a d dynamic crosshair. I've been using it more often, and it just helps with that. Um, it may be a little bit harder to see some of the outlines, but it definitely helps um, with your accuracy, especially when you're just learning. So we'll start off with... Uh, the left side, which would be your WASD. Of course, there's moving forward, backwards, left and right. And then I switched my keys for walk and strafe. My caps lock is my walk, and my shift is my strafe. I moved them up. Usually, it's control and caps lock. I decided to change that so they're easier to hit. I also went into my options here, went into, I believe it's game settings. No, it is keyboard and mouse. And I changed my walk mode to toggle. That way, if I'm wanting to be sneaky and walk around, I can just tap my caps lock, and I'm always walking until I tap it again. The reason I didn't do this with my crouch is because I don't want to be crouch walking everywhere and then forget about it or uh, not be able to, to get out of it quick enough. I want to be able to you know run up, crouch, shoot someone, and then move on. But I want to be able to tap and, and focus on my aiming than having to worry about holding my pinky finger on a caps lock or shift and, you know, 
my pinky getting tired and possibly, you know, leaving and, and making noise. Um, and I believe that we'll probably do sounds and noises and, and stuff like that um, in another video, so we'll just worry about movement for now. Um, so, of course, there's, you know, strafing back and forth and moving around WASD, walking and, and shifting. So everyone knows that then you have to worry about your mouse. You can go up, down, left, right. Um, and, and as you move, you can see your accuracy and your crosshair um, changes. And, and you can see this by the way the, the gap moves. And the gap is going to show where your bullets are going to go and how accurate you can be. And as you can see when you're at full, you can see how wide it is. Uh, the difference in if I'm standing still, where the bullets may go there, and all of that stuff. Now when it comes to um, moving the mouse as well, as I covered in another video, you also have to worry about bullet drop. Um, which can be compensated easier while walking or crouching because you're more accurate when you're walking you're even more accurate when you're crouching so when you're crouching of course you're able to compensate easier even if you're walking you're still easy to come easy it's easier to compensate which is why you will see higher up players not crouch to shoot anymore because it tends to keep you stuck in a, in a position and you can't move. Um, if they need to be accurate, most of the time you will see them come up, say there is someone there, you will see them come up, walk, stop moving, and then come out of their walk. Or you will see them, of course, strafe to get the kill instead of... Now, if there's a bunch of people there and they need to be accurate for a long period of time, you may see them stay crouched to, to keep the, the spray, but other than that, you don't really see people crouch too much to crouch walk. Now, when it comes to recoiling, and we're going to get in some of the more advanced steps of movement, um, first we will, of course, go into um, strafe jumping. Now, strafe jumping is a little bit easier to show than to with keyboard and mouse unfortunately I don't have a camera to do that or I would definitely uh, have a camera on my fingers and mouse as I'm doing this but the easiest way to explain this is so normally when you jump off of something you're holding down A and you jump okay if you if you keep holding A you go farther if you jump and hold back you kind of go backwards but if you jump and hold right, you kind of go to the left a little, or to the right a little bit. And it's the same for the left. If you hold left, you kind of go to the left. And that's what we're going to take advantage of. Because in this game, physics aren't really physics, as you saw with grenades. So while you're jumping and holding right without holding forward, so what basically what you're going to do is you're going to jump, let go of forward, and hold right, at the same time, you're going to s move your mouse to the right. So, jump, let go, move mouse to the right. And as you can see, I kind of glide to the other side. As you, you, A lot of people use this in, in uh, CSGO surfing, if you've ever uh, seen anything like that. So, jump, hold right, and glide. What you then can do is you can chain those together as you can see people kind of float in the air and this can be very very useful say you want to go down there but you don't want to just come up through here because you know someone might be peeking you you can strafe around so all I did there was I I was holding forward I jumped held left after I jumped and turned my mouse to the left and it looks something like this because all I'm doing is holding left while I'm in the air and moving my mouse to the left. And the more you turn, the farther you strafe. So you can literally turn in place, as you saw right there. You can literally just jump and do a complete 180, which I've seen people do if they're running up here, someone's shooting at them. You just turn and jump 
at them instead of just turning you can like do a jump turn or if someone's like down here and you come up here and you pass them you can also do a strafe and, and now you're right behind them strafing can also be used uh, to get places quicker than just doing that sometimes you can get to places that aren't usually uh, you're not able to really get to sometimes like if you wanna move you can counter straight back and forth and get to here when if you were normally well that's the buy key if you were normally just running and jumping watch me actually be able to make this yeah you, you can still make that but um, I guess the example is probably good enough but you can you can strafe and do a lot of things you can strafe around corners which will help you actually get around corners faster you can come around here and kinda of do a little quick strafe and it helps you uh, just not have to take those one or two little steps just like jumping across here you can strafe and you kinda of land quieter than just jumping you can strafe and, and go back and forth and strafing isn't just in the air though strafing can can help you while you're shooting which brings us to uh, counter strafing while shooting this technique is probably the hardest technique to to learn and get used to when playing but it's definitely definitely uh, something once you learn it it's very good so when you're moving back and forth you can notice that when you stop and change directions your crosshair is accurate so if you time that up properly you can kind of get into the rhythm of shooting so if someone's on cat you can get into a rhythm of peeking them or as I do I kind of tap them and your shots are always going to be accurate no matter where you do it if you just I mean, I don't know if you can hear this or not, but the shots are always, always accurate. So then what you start to do while you're doing that is you're just tapping A and D back and forth, but you're, you're focusing on which direction you're wanting to peek. So as an example, um, let's find a good place that I normally do this at. We'll, we'll go here to peek uh, the guy at CT. We'll say that there's a guy, I don't know, there's a guy right there. And you're coming around here and you you know he's going to be peeking you so you want to use like this ledge right here to uh, help you. So what you're going to do is you're going to pull out and then as soon as you go out tap your left key to stop your motion and then you're going to be of course you know using your right to, to aim where you want to go which is going to be crosshair placement which is going to be the uh, I touched in the last video but I will touch one more time um, at some point but basically um, we'll say an opper is right there there's usually one there or up there so we'll just use that one for now you know where he's going to be so you do your whole thing, you know, you come out, throw your flash, throw your smokes and stuff, you, you know you got them blinded, you know you can get to here safely. And then you know he's going to be peeking you. So what you're going to do is you're going to pull out, have your crosshair where you think he's going to be. Sometimes you have to adjust, but at least you're in the vicinity. If you're aiming, if you're aiming down here and you pull out, now you have to flick up, like flick up and over. If you're above him, you have to flick down. If you're aiming like like out here and now you have to like uh and the chances of you like coming over and making that perfect shot because remember we aimed there so in order to come out here and make that like that that's that reaction time is is insane so what you're going to do is you're going to come out and just tap the opposite key and what you can do is just keep doing that and even though it's not completely accurate, you can see those things are pretty much in the same area. Because he's going to be here, maybe. 
He might even be boosted up on top of this crouched. And as you can see, I mean, there and there. You're pretty much going to be hitting him if he's crouched. If he's up here, we can even show. So we move up here again. And we're going to be aiming up there this time. So you're going to come out and you're just going to tap the left. And it basically cancels your movement. And it makes you accurate for that split second. And I'm even wall banging through that at this point. So even if you want a wide peek, you're still going to do it. And it helps you, you burst weapons. And um, let's even with a better weapon. This is an even better weapon to show, because the AK is, is very um, inaccurate as usual, but as you can see, if you tap it, or even if you burst it, the accuracies on it are very, very good. So you're just going to be doing that constantly and 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 peeking and you can do it with the other side holding left and then tapping your right and it cancels your movements so what you want to do is you want to really get used to doing that in spots where you really need to get a kill or there's there's someone that's peeking you and you know where to hit them you can do it you can practice with a deagle sometimes you can get it Um, I like practicing with my M4 just because it's the most accurate and it kind of gets you the idea of what you're doing. And it can help you from anywhere. I mean, if, if you're peeking someone in Palace and, and you know that there's someone there, you can come out. And it helps you really get your crosshair placement down because if you can get your crosshair placement down, it really helps. And, and this technique will, will help you even farther in the long run. Because if you're... You know, if, if someone's up, let, let's give an example here. If someone's, we'll just use the same example as usually. If someone's over there, and, and like we said, if you're, you're coming out and peeking here, you want to be putting those two things together. Left and right, left and right, left and right. This is where the dot comes in handy, if you want to show exactly where you're looking. But I can kind of tell. So you always, like... Yeah, you can check this to make sure, but as soon as you come out, you want to be looking exactly where you want to look to check your spots. So, for instance, if I was playing, um, if I was playing on Mirage, I would do my smoke, smoke. you know, throw your flash. Smoke's going to come down, land over there, that's going to block that off. So I'm coming through, okay, clear, clear. I'm protected by this. So the only thing that I really need to watch is someone that may come from over there and someone that may come from over here. Maybe there might be someone there. Usually that's called out by the people in Palace. So the only other place to look is here. But I don't want to take my eyes off this. So as I come around, I just move my crosshair. And sometimes there will be someone called out. So I can just come over and, and, and peek it. If there's an opper, I can, I can even like try to wall bang it if I think I can get them. You can kind of get really close and come around if you want to do a little wall peek. I do not recommend this against an opper because you'll, he'll see your shoulder right here. So you're probably dead. So you got to kind of pre-fire. But if you're back farther... You can kind of get him. Or what, what's best for this is if he shoots and misses, then you can just tap it and wait for him to peek his head. Um, let's see. What else in movement can we cover? I switched my controls around. I don't know if I like them. Um, 
of course we've done grenades and stuff uh, in the last video. There's just a couple things in grenades that um, you can use um, using the backwards grenade. I mean, you can throw like backwards flashes. So like right click, throw it backwards behind you and turn. I haven't had the opportunity to use one yet, but I'm sure I will. For example, if people are here, you don't want to you want to flash, but you don't want to be, uh, like, moved out. Instead of, instead of doing a left click, throwing, and the flash coming all the way out here to bounce in the middle. Yes, it may flash everybody, but it may not hit everyone. People may turn. You can kind of right click and back throw. That was bad. Right click, back throw, and instead it kind of slowly arcs out. Or if someone's like in here, you can kind of. Deploying flashbang. That was bad again. I'm bad at these, as you can tell. Deploying flashbang. And you can kind of come out and peek. Just, just some things to do, instead of doing the usual like trying to. Bounce it off, but um, I mean you can, uh, you can't really do it with needs. Um, while we are here though, once again I'll show you that smoke again, just as a, a quick thing. Um, against the door, I usually line it up with this and go a little to the right, and Drop jump. Smoke. And it usually lands right on that box. You can't really overthrow it as long as you don't run. If you run, sometimes it will bounce on the box and go out. So as long as you don't run, you can kind of land it there. That one's good, but there's still a bit of an opening. So what I should do is go right above that and throw. Let's see if that works. And that lands perfect. And that cuts off CT for you guys. So there's just a quick smoke along with some of the movement stuff. Um, counter strafing, when it comes to more of the movement stuff, you can just strafe back and forth if you want. Um, it keeps you from, from dying. If you can learn to, to, to spray while you're changing directions. So if... if, um, if that's the guy's head you can kind of but it doesn't really work that well unless you time it um, but usually you can kind of like tap and kill somebody but um, that's about it the main the main things that I wanted to show you guys was of course the strafing on both ends for movement um, I use strafing a lot with a lot of different things. It can definitely save you time and keep you quiet. So you can, like this is one of them. You can, I tried this earlier. But you can come up here and then jump into the window by strafing. If you jump straight at it, usually you'll hit the top so you kind of strafe over and you can land on that just in case but it's a good way to get from there to here um, but I think that's going to do it I'm sure I will end this video and think of something else but this video has gone pretty long so I may just touch on some things um, elsewhere but if you guys like this video click that like button below if there's anything else you'd like me to cover any other maps you'd like me to cover um, any spots you know if you guys have any spots that you guys want me to test uh, smokes and nades, I can literally sit in a 30 minute video and try to figure out nade spots for you guys. Um, I know there's some that I've always wanted to to find out. Just, you know, say you're in this situation and you need to smoke something. Smoke. Just trying to lob a smoke. Which, I mean, I guess that's one, which I'm sure you actually might be able to throw a 
Molly? Nope. Had to be a... Fire in the hole. Nope, that didn't work either. So it'd only be a smoke for that. But, um, like I said, if you guys have anything you guys want me to go over, leave it in the comments. And as always, I'm Master RKO, and I will see you guys next time. Adios. Yeah.